When it comes to travelling in style, few do it better than global leaders. With the need to travel comfortably, productively and safely, and budgets to make this happen, many leaders have some amazing aircraft. Let's look at some of the best active jets, along with a few others that deserve a mention. Presidential and head of state air travel was relatively rare before the Second World War. The British were the first to introduce dedicated VIP aircraft. Two planes were adopted by the Royal Air Force for royal and government service in 1928, becoming known as the King's Flight from 1936. In the US, Franklin Roosevelt became the first serving president to fly, heading to Morocco in 1943 on a Pan American World Airways crewed Boeing 314. The first dedicated aircraft to carry the president was a modified Douglas C-54 Skymaster, nicknamed the Sacred Cow. Roosevelt used this in 1945 to attend the Yalta Conference in the Soviet Union to discuss the post-war situation in Europe. Today, many countries of some form of dedicated transport, often operated by special military units. Today, many leaders are turning to more private vehicles because it's always safer, it's always more trusted and it's more comfortable to have your own way to move around. Uh, with these leaders spending much of their time in the air, uh, they need as much comfort as they can get. Some of the most important political decisions in the, in the world were made while in disguise, so it's a, a crucial aspect to have a, in the modern era. Quite a few countries don't have such aircraft though, instead using commercial options or hiring aircraft when needed. Some notable countries that don't operate dedicated aircraft include Austria, China, Israel, New Zealand, Norway and Singapore. Some VIP aircraft remain quite simple, while others are flying offices or even palaces. In this video, we'll take a look at just a few of the most outstanding aircraft. The US President's transport needs no introduction. Without a doubt, it's the most recognized and well-known amongst all VIP aircraft. It's also one of the best equipped and most expensive, a suitable start to our review. The current main aircraft used are variants of the Boeing 747-200, designated the VC-25A. These iconic blue and white aircraft were introduced in 1990 and are officially named SAM Special Air Mission 28000 and SAM 29000. There are plenty of features on these jets that a commercial 747 does not have. It has defense countermeasures to disrupt heat-seeking missiles, technology to jam radar and extensive communications facilities. It can also be refueled in flight. As we've noted in other videos, the US will soon have a new and improved Air Force One. In fact, a pair of 747-8i jets are currently undergoing extensive refit. Interestingly, they are being modified from aircraft ordered for failed Russian airline TransAero, who never took delivery of the pair. Reports suggest that President Trump has called for a more lavish interior and larger beds. He also wanted the color scheme changed for the first time since 1962. What do you think of this new design? Moving on, Saudi Arabian Prince Al Walid's extremely lavish Boeing 747 likely takes top place for most lavish jet. This was purchased in 2003 at a cost of $485 million. The jet has been refitted to match his palatial home and is less about offices and meeting space and more about relaxation and opulence. There are luxurious bedrooms and bathrooms, a large dining area, extensive lounge areas and a large throne for the prince. There's plenty of gold trim decoration and even a large chandelier. The prince was going to acquire an even more lavish private A380 in 2007, but the financial crisis of 2008 to 2009 ended his hopes. Reported plans for the interior include a lift to the prince's private suite, a Haman bath area, a rotating prayer space that could turn to face Mecca, and naturally, a parking garage for a Rolls Royce. Sticking with opulence, the Sultan of Brunei owns a whole fleet of aircraft for his travels. Until recently, the most frequently used was an A340-200 used for long-haul travel. This was delivered in 1994 and retired in 2018. Inside, the jet is fitted out with bedrooms, showers and dining areas. 
The family went after another A340 in 2008. This was in fact a unique A340-8000 ordered for the Sultan's brother. It was derived from the A340-200 but fitted with auxiliary fuel tanks to increase the range to 14,800 km, enough for a direct flight from Brunei to the USA. The order was eventually abandoned and the aircraft would go on to join the Saudi Arabian Royal Fleet. The most recent additions to the Sultan's fleet are a 7478i aircraft added in 2016 and a 787 aircraft in 2019. These have been seen in operation, but little is known about their interiors. Uniquely amongst leaders, the Sultan is also a qualified pilot. He can and does fly the A340, the 747s as well as other aircraft in his fleet, and occasionally even commercial flights with Royal Brunei Airlines. The Russian president uses a well-equipped Ilyushin aircraft, the IL-96. This jet is much newer than the United States 747s, with the latest delivered in 2013. In fact, there are four identical IL-96 aircraft, often all flying together to disguise which aircraft the President is on board. Much of the interior design and fittings are kept secret, however we know that there are fur rugs and Russian tapestries and paintings on the walls. The President has a bedroom with a king-sized bed, a bathroom with bidet and gold trimming, and even a gym. These IL-96s are also set up with a full communication suite and air defense countermeasures. There's also reportedly some form of escape pod. If you're liking this video so far, why not click subscribe and hit the like button? Oh, and be sure to click that notification bell too. German Chancellor Angela Merkel probably has the best aircraft of any European leader. A new flagship A350-900 was added to the government fleet this year to replace the previous aircraft, an A340. Ultimately, there will be three A350s in the government fleet. The first was delivered last August and the second was undergoing test flights as of November 2020. An interesting note is that these are the first A350s to be used in non-commercial service. While the first aircraft was delivered with a temporary cabin to get it into service quicker, the next two will be fully fitted out with office space, cabins and seating before the first one is then refitted similarly. The previous aircraft, known as Konrad Adenauer, is certainly impressive. It featured bedrooms, offices and lounges. It even apparently has a soundproof room, presumably for those super top-secret conversations. Of course, it also had missile defenses and extensive communications features. Hopefully, the new A350 will be more reliable than its predecessor. In a well-publicized incident in 2018, Merkel arrived late for a G20 summit in Buenos Aires after Konrad Adenauer developed technical problems. In a significant downgrade, Merkel had to switch to a commercial flight with Iberia. The French presidential fleet's primary VIP transport is an A330-200. However, there are also several A310s and two A340 aircraft that can also be used. The A330 was introduced in 2011, converted from previous passenger use by Swiss Air. It takes the callsign COTAM001 when in official use. Like many other presidential aircraft, it's designed both as a transport and operational center, fitted out with full communications facilities. There's a bedroom and office space for the president, a large soundproof meeting area, and a series of business class and economy class seating. Along with Germany, India has some of the newest presidential aircraft. In October 2020, it received the first of two dedicated 777-300 aircraft. Before that, 747-400s from Air India were used. The 777s previously served with Air India and have been undergoing refit in the US since 2018. The jets will feature a range of technical improvements, including a special protection suite capable of jamming enemy radar frequencies, diverting heat-seeking missiles, and intercepting missile systems without any crew interventions. We don't hear a great deal about Japan's VIP transport, which shares several similarities with America's Air Force One. It uses two aircraft, designed to be used by both the Prime Minister and the Japanese Imperial family. And they use the call signs Japanese Air Force One and Japanese Air Force Two. 
The first two aircraft used were modified 747-400s ordered in 1987 and entered service in 1991. Fitted out with a VIP cabin at the front of the lower deck, they also include ample amounts of passenger seating and office space. Both the rear cabin and the upper deck were fitted with close to standard seating. This allowed dual use of the aircraft for overseas evacuation or troop deployment missions. However, the 747s were replaced by two 777-300 aircraft in 2018. These only started service in mid-2019, and we've yet to see details of their fitting. We know from Japanese media that they contain private cabins and office space, as well as 21 business class-style seats and 85 economy seats. A few other aircraft fall outside the realms of crazy or extravagant, but are certainly worth a mention. The UK Prime Minister and members of the British Royal Family are looked after by the Royal Air Force's 32nd Squadron. The main VIP aircraft is an Airbus A330, known as the RAF Voyager. So back in the 1920s, it was actually the British monarch that was the first head of state to have its own uh, private aircraft. So it makes sense today that the United Kingdom wants, his, uh, wants a similar plane to represent its country today. In fact, following its paint job, in November, it first transported Prince Charles to Berlin, so its first passenger was still royalty. Downing Street put it perfectly. What better way to represent the country around the world with a suitable and uh, a great-looking aircraft? When not in use for VIP travel, this serves as an air refueler for the Royal Air Force. It's more subdued than other leaders' transports, and there are no luxurious cabins or extensive office spaces. Instead, there is simply a series of standard cabins with 58 business-class-style seats and 100 economy seats. The aircraft raised some controversy in 2020 when it received a new $1 million paint job, taking it from standard military grey into red, white and blue UK colours. The North Korean leader Kim Jong-un travels on one of two Russian-built Ilyushin IL-62 aircraft. These are dedicated and fitted out for VIP travel, but operated by Air Curio. It takes the call sign Chame-1 when the leader is on board. It has been in service for 39 years, making it the oldest aircraft in presidential use. In fact, very few commercial aircraft are older than this. It's far from certain how much use it has had, though. The Kim family has rarely traveled far, and previous leaders have preferred train travel to aircraft. And even when it does fly, the leader may not be on board. Going quote-unquote south of the border, South Korea will be taking a 7478 for its presidential jet next year. This will replace the current government 747-400. When flying special missions, the aircraft is given the name Code 1. Historically, the lease for Code 1 has been filled by either Korean Air or Asiana Airlines. This arrangement will continue as the 7478 will be leased from Korean. Leading up to the November 2021 entry into service, the 7478 will be equipped with various security and communication devices. Similar to what we know of the United States Air Force One, VC-25A modified 747-200, this presidential aircraft will also have special hardware to improve its defense against outside attacks such as missiles. The Mexican presidential 7878 aircraft, known as Jose Maria Morelos y Pavón, stands out for both its cost and controversy. President Enrique Peña Nieto introduced it to replace an aging 757 in presidential service. It was estimated to have cost around $218 million, certainly at the high end of presidential aircraft costs. However, the current president, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, sees this as lavish and wasteful apparently preferring to travel commercially. Since 2019, he's been trying to sell it. With interest seemingly low, the government has considered giving it away as a raffle prize or leasing it out by the hour. Possibly uniquely, though, amongst world leaders, he simply doesn't want to use it. My favourite jet has to be the Air Force One. It always sticks out for its glamour and history. It even holds even more lore today. The Boeing 747 is rapidly disappearing from our skies. The 747 marks an iconic era in American aviation, and what better way to represent the leader of the country? If you had a choice, which presidential jet would you want to fly on? Let us know in the comments.
Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.